All right, I'm back working on the Mustang today. Today I'm going to reassemble this lower door hinge, and the first thing I want to do is show you some differences between the new and the old bushing. All right, so here's a little interesting observation that I made. I removed the bushings from the original uh, hinge, and these are the original bushings on the right, and the new ones here are on the left, and you can see that these new ones are shorter than the old ones, the original ones. So, you know, they built them, they built them well back then, and you know, what you can get today is not quite the same. Okay, so now that I've removed the bushings, I'm just going to clean out this hole uh, where the bushings go into, and I'm just going to take a piece of steel wool and shove it in there. Whoops, pushed too hard. And just kind of turn it, twist it around while it's in there. You can see it cleans out the rust. Let's see if I can get it to go all the way through this time. Now, if you don't pack it so tight, it's a little easier to get it in. And then just come out the other side. And that'll clean it out. So just do that a few times before you put the bushings, the new bushings back in. Now I'm going to install the new bushings. And just like I did on that upper hinge, I'm just going to use this little wooden block. Now the other side. All right, now I'm going to install the pin that holds the little roller bushing on it. But I've noticed something unusual about the replacement bushing. If you put it in from this side, the bushing goes around the pin, but then it has like a little ledge on the bottom that won't let the bushing go all the way up to the head of the pin. It stops a little bit below the top of the pin. And if I turn it around, the, the, the land on this pin, you know, the, the flat part that doesn't have these uh, grooves cut in it, I can't even get the bushing to go past the bottom of that land. So I think, you know, that, that it's probably made that way. I can't it could be a, there could just be a burr on the bottom of this that you'd have, that have to cut off. But I, I tend to think that this is uh, the way it's made so that when you press this thing in, you don't push the pin in so far that you pinch this little roller and it won't roll anymore. And that was the problem with the last one, I think. It was in there too tight and it stopped rolling and that's why the hinge or that that plate on the hinge started to cut into it. So I'm going to install it this way. Um, I measured the depth of this hole just by sticking this little uh, tool down in here, putting a piece of tape on it. And I can see that the depth of the hole is deeper than the length of the pin. And even if I went all the way to the head of the pin with this roller, the hole would still be deeper. So the pin's not going to bottom out in the hole. So I'm going to put it in this way. So I'm going to just turn this pin a little bit until it hits those ridges. That's it right there. And now I'm just going to start uh, hammering it in. Now I'm going to move it to the anvil part of the bench vise and hammer the rest of it in that way. Okay, so now the pin's in. 
and this little bushing rolls freely instead of getting stuck like the old one did and I can't really hammer it any more than this because of that little ledge on the bottom of this thing and it won't go up so I think that's how it's intended to be anyway that's how I'm going to do it okay for the next step I'm going to put in this uh, the detent arm with its pin goes in this hole and the one thing that you have to be careful about is that you don't put the detent arm on whoops, backwards. You could put it on either way. You could flip it upside down. But I'm uh, working from a picture that I took. I always print these out on the printer so I know what I'm doing. And the other clue that I have that tells me which way to put it on is uh, to recall the next thing that we have to put on is the spring and I dropped the new one this is the old one but the spring goes on this little post here and then it also fits over this little bump this little uh, nub on the arm so I know that the detent arm goes on this way if I turn it upside down then obviously the arm for the spring is on the back and that's not right. So just be careful. You don't want to have to remove it and flip it around. And I'll put the spring on after I put the two pieces of the hinge together. There's no other way to, to keep it clamped in there because the spring will push it apart. So I'm just going to hammer this one in just like I did the other one. Now this one's a little hard to get to, so I'm going to use the old hinge pin on top of this pin so I can hammer it in without hitting this part of the hinge. Make sure it's going in straight. I think I'm going to get the bigger mallet. Okay, I'm going to move this, I'm going to move over to the anvil section of the bench vise so that I can hold it more uh, aligned with the axis of the pin so when I hit it it doesn't go off axis and go in crooked. But it's almost in. Just wanted to check at the bottom and make sure that the pin wasn't trying to come out of the hole and it's not. That's, that's probably it. Got a little bit of up and down wiggle to it. I could probably hit it a couple more times. All right, that's it. That's that's good now. That spring is going to do everything it needs to to push on this piece. So that's it. Now that was a little more difficult than I expected. One thing you could do is you could put you could put the pin in the freezer for a few hours, and you could take this the hinge part and heat it up and then when you bring the two together if you do it really quick it would probably go in a little smoother so you know maybe next time I'll try something like that all right so that just leaves the uh, the main hinge pin that unites the two halves of the door hinge together and the spring and the only way to put the spring in is to first put the two halves of the hinge together so let's do that okay so the last piece that has to go together are the two halves of the hinge and the only thing you can screw up on this I suppose and I don't know maybe it's not even possible to do yet be 
these. You can see how tight it is for these two pieces to fit together with that, those little bushings in there. But you want to make sure that the, the new roller is on this side of the detent arm. I don't really know if you could, if it's, I guess, yeah, there might not be enough swing if you put it on, you know, obviously if I take it apart, if you put it on like this, with this detent arm on the back, then you might not be able to get it swung around in front of the, uh, in front of the roller pin. So make sure when you put it together, put it together in the condition that it's supposed to be in the final position, which is this way. I don't expect a lot of resistance putting this pin in. I did put a little bit of grease on it. And I'm just gonna, just gonna tap it in slowly with the hammer. So I know that everything's lined up. And I'll just gently tap in this pin. Okay, starting to come out the bottom. So now we can just pound it the rest of the way through. And again, I'll use the old hinge pin to make it easier to hit this new one. Okay, now I have to hit it hard because I have to get those little ridges down into the top of the hinge itself. And if you remember last time, uh, we put it in a socket and then put it on the solid surface and we'll do the same thing again. All right, I'll try it from this angle. And if it doesn't work, you might just have to take my word for it that I get it in. Alright, so that's going to work. I'm going to just to continue to hammer that until that pin head is set all the way down. Alright, so I had to switch to my other video camera because the battery burned out. And uh, the sound wasn't very good on that camera. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to put in the spring between the detent bar and the hinge. And at first, all I'm going to do is try and put it in by compressing it with a pair of pliers but you're going to see that that really isn't going to work. So after I tried that for a few minutes, I decided that I would resort to uh, compressing the spring in the vise and then putting the picture frame wire on it like I did when I removed it. And that was uh, much more successful when I got the uh, wire around it. I think in this clip, uh, yeah, I'll just be able to push it in by hand uh, once I get it in there and lined up. And again, I'm, I'm struggling with the focusing on this other camera. It has some kind of continuous focus mechanism. But anyway, there you can see the, the spring is in. And now all I need to do is to remove those wires. So I'm going to cut them with the wire cutters and get that out of there. And after that, um, the, the hinge is basically done now. It's been totally reassembled. And um, I'm going to cut the little pin off in between the two halves of the hinge. I'm not going to show you that. And this is just uh, trying to operate the hinge by hand. So this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching.